Work with what you have. This talk is not about the technology, it's about the concepts behind actually telling a story. So look, the history of videos, we have the old 16 mil, we move on to these big bad boys in the 80s, everyone has, remembers you put the whole VHS cassette into those. Then we start to condense down, we get smaller and we go into HD video, everyone's amazed, oh HD's incredible, it has this amazing video quality. Um, now we can cram them into our own little snap cameras and we can get HD video. Wonderful. You know what? I'm getting so into this HD, I'm going to buy myself an SLR and that's going to do video as well. You know what? That's great. But there's also really basic tools people use. Webcams. Flip cameras. The quality of the video is not that great, but does that really matter? If it's something you're comfortable with, you should be using it. Don't worry about the quality of the visual as we've talked about before. It doesn't necessarily have to be in HD. Your file size is going to be a lot bigger if it is. There's nothing wrong with using a webcam or a flip camera. You don't need an iPad to do this stuff, all right? Because the one thing all these things have in common is that they must have a decent story. It doesn't matter what technology you use. The main concept is the story. And to have a story, you need three things. You need characters, place, and situation. Those three things tell a story. It doesn't matter what technology you use, that story is still there. So tip number eight is embrace narration. We have the image, but a crucial part of what we do with the image is the commentary that comes with it. It's not enough just to look at something. We want to comment on it. We want to uh, attach hashtags to it so we can share it with people. The text and the message and the words that we use nowadays are just as important as the image itself. Archive in order to display, tip number nine. All your work will need to be archived. It should also be displayed. There's nothing worse than stuff that gets recorded, and I know I've done it. I've got hard drives full of stuff that no one's ever seen. Great footage that's never gotten over the line because I just have not had the time to put it together. So when you're archiving your stuff, you really need to sort of look at it. Hey, what am I going to be using this for? How am I actually going to get this stuff and make use of it? Those of you that have done a project before, you might have got to the stage where it's ended up on a disc or on a USB. Great, that's really good. You're doing better than most people. However, where does most of this stuff end up? It ends up one of two places. It ends up on a shelf or in a drawer. That's what happens. Teachers are time poor. They don't have a lot of time to be doing this stuff. So if you really want to get stuck into it, you really do need to keep in mind that the archiving of it and putting stuff together and actually getting a finished product is really important. Heaven forbid you should be probably like myself and you end up with files like this, okay? And this is what most people do, you know, they just get, ends up getting lost in the maelstrom of other files that they've got. This is normal. And when you're working with video, you're going to end up with lots of big files, small files, unless you've actually got some system of archiving them, naming them properly, and putting them somewhere you can get to, you will end up not doing anything with them. And that's just the reality. I don't have a magic bullet for you. I don't have the answer. It all comes down to time. It's something that you need to work out yourself. What's the most effective for you? Do you buy yourself an external hard drive and dump everything on that? Do you buy discs and leave them on those and keep a, a group of discs on your shelf? It's really up to what works best for you, but just be aware that this is actually a crucial part and there is no easy answer to it, unfortunately. So the last tip is find a platform and practice that platform. This sounds very simple, but there are lots of different ways that you can edit these things together. Some very Complex, some very simple. If you know someone at the school that has expertise and has the time to help you, become friends with that person if you want to do this stuff. Otherwise, the four platforms that I would suggest you use at very basic level. You've got your Windows <laughs> platform, which is your basic movie maker. It's built into every uh, version of Windows. You've got different variations on it. I think if you've got the movie maker live, you don't get the narration um, tool, so you can always just go and upgrade <coughs> to Basic Movie Maker, which has a narration tool, which is really helpful when you're editing. So we've got the PC user, we've got an older MacBook here that's running the first version of iMovie called iMovie HD. The original HD to me is still the best platform for students and teachers that have never worked in this area before. The simplest format, the easiest to pick up straight away. I also have a, a MacBook Pro here, which is set up with the latest version of iMovie. Interesting progression with iMovie. It's gone sort of around a big full circle. I find the latest version is closer to the HD version yeah, you know, than all the other iterations that came. Even had the, time the, <laughs> the last one, of course, is the iMovie for iPad. I have an iPad here um, that we can have a go with as well. And they're all built into the phone. If you've got an iPhone 6, you get it for free. 
If you want to buy it for your phone, it's about six bucks. So it's a small price to pay for something that is actually quite powerful.